And it is fundamentally changed. There's just a compelling video there. Bill Weir um, from CNN. All right, so uh, we'll be assessing more at daylight what the wrath of Irma really was as far as damage. I can tell you that around Tampa Bay now, the outer southern part of the eye is about to approach. The widespread feeder bands are extending out into the Atlantic, which is good, so they're not nailing us this morning. Um, looks like Irma will continue a north-northwest trajectory uh, right now, moving up that I-75 corridor, probably for a second landfall opportunity and likelihood around East Point, Florida, around uh, uh, Apalachicola. Right now, heavy rain bands on that right northeast quadrant, which uh, has considerably widened. This is a category one storm now with 85 mile an hour winds to the north. And for us, we just see stuff outside uh, basically drizzle, a little bit of light stuff. Nothing dramatic like yesterday. There is a little cell moving in through Boca, but I mean, nothing on the level of severe weather or tornadic uh, rain wrapped uh, embedded tornadoes like yesterday was so characteristic. So basically 85 mile an hour winds, a north northwest movement at 15 miles an hour would put it in the Big Bend area of Florida tonight with 75 mile an hour category one strength winds. Then beyond that, it turns into a tropical storm approaching Dothan, Alabama sometime uh, by um, later on tonight. And then Tuesday, it's a tropical depression near Birmingham. So Irma still has a shelf life and for the first time in a really uh, long time, they've had tropical storm watches and warnings up from Atlanta all the way over into Alabama. So that's something unusual. And when you see what happened with Irma, we were really saved from a little bit more wrath because of this dry air sloth. This is that uh, trough that we said was going to direct Irma's path. And Irma, by the way, went a little bit more on the easterly fringe of the cone. So that's good. The dry air helped, uh, of course, uh, with some relief for the Treasure Coast, which got nailed yesterday, and as a result of the high rainfall totals and all the tornadoes that swept through there with such vigor, we have a flood warning still in play until 545 this morning for Indian River, Martin, Okeechobee, and St. Lucie counties. There's a look at some of those rain totals. Almost 17 and a half inches around Lakewood Park, 14 to 15 inches right in the heart of Fort Pierce. So it just blew up there. And I mean, we had major flooding issues. 25 mile an hour wind gusts in Jupiter, 48 in Port St. Lucie and 45 right around the lake. So around the lake, you have the highest winds right now. These gusts of tropical storm force in many spots will continue for the next couple of hours. Our maintained winds right now, those steady winds are at 24 miles an hour in West Palm so very breezy, 35 in Port St. Lucie, 30 in Okeechobee, 20 in Belle Glade, and 13 in Jupiter. So Irma just uh, wreaked havoc. I mean, it sounds cliche, but really did just sort of uh, jumping from landfall to landfall to landfall. In fact, seven landfalls in her history. And it's not quite over yet, but uh, as far as landfalls, it might be. Barbuda first, St. Martin after that. Those islands absolutely crushed. And you know what? Jose is over them now. So Taylor's going to be talking about that coming up. But also after that, it went on to the British Virgin Islands and then Little Inagua over the Bahamas and then Cajo Key and Marco Island for the U.S. So Florida Keys and then the U.S. mainland and Marco Island and then traversing up I-75 toward Tampa as still an inland storm but a category one hurricane. 92 for us today still looks a little rough at times we're going to see those showers and storms really pop if you will a 50 percent chance of that happening and south wind steady at about 20 to 40 miles an hour at least for the first half of today then the winds die down tomorrow more normal and absolutely beautiful we'll see the sun again it'll be a great day to maybe go out and get some exercise if you're cabin fever crazy 91 degrees the low 78 then as we head into wednesday we're looking at about 90 and then forward after that 89 to 90 Thursday through the weekend ahead uh, with just daily rounds of showers and storms that are due to the heating of the day and the speed breeze interaction. So uh, nothing tropical in the near future, but it's interesting to note that yesterday was the peak of the tropical hurricane season. And that's when Irma made landfall over the U.S. So we are still in the peak of the season, but the actual peak day was September the 10th. So uh, kind of weird to see that. And on 9:10, somebody uh, tweeted me this, Aaron and Mark, on 9:10 at 9:10, Irma made that first U.S. landfall in the Florida Keys. Isn't that weird? That